So, on December 13th, we got the story of the death of Alan Thicke. He died at age 69. He's the he's famous for being the dad on the TV show Growing Pains. And there's a huge Super Bowl clue that's in the mix with this, among other things. But I find it kind of weird that we have this, this TV dad dies on December 13th, just a couple weeks after we get the TV mom dying. The, the mom on the Brady Bunch, Florence Henderson. Her death also super connected to football, Michigan Wolverines, and Tom Brady and whatnot. And I'm not going to, maybe I'll make a video on this. I didn't have internet at the time, that's why I didn't make a video. But there was a whole bunch of stuff in regards to Michigan and also the Patriots. And it reminded me a lot of the death of Ann B. Davis, who played Alice on the Brady Bunch, and the year that she died, later that year, or that next football season, the Patriots went on to win the Super Bowl. Michigan's coach, Brady Hoke, got fired. But anyway, I'll just show you some of the stuff that I talked about in this post really quick, and then I'm going to go back to the Alan Thick stuff. So, literally... Ann B. Davis dies at the age of 88. She was even, you know, went to the University of Michigan. But she died on 6-1, which was right around the same time that Dr. Dre bought Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchchin's house. The Brady Bunchchin house. And later that year, it was Super Bowl 49 that the Patriots won. Dr. Dre in Gematria equals 49. He was born on the 49th day of the year. And he was also 49 years old when he bought that house. And then the Patriots go on to win Super Bowl 49. And a whole bunch of other stuff. Alice dies age 88, which is interesting because Straight Outta Compton came out on 8-8 eight, eight of 88. And a whole bunch more. Even that year we had the, the Snickers commercial with Steve Buscemi and the Brady Bunch commercial and whatnot. The Brady Bunch Snickers commercial in Gematria, Snickers equals 98, Brady Bunch equals 98, Tom Brady equals 98, became the starter at Michigan in the year 98, Looper Calia equals 98, the Roman festival where they celebrate and sacrifice the wolf, Tom Brady, the former Michigan Wolverine. Also, Valentine's Day is the second day of Looper Calia, which just so happens to be Florence Henderson's birthday. Also, Jim Harbaugh equals 98, Michigan Wolverines equal 98. If you write out 98, it equals 64. Michigan equals 64. Also, in regards to Brady, this lady dies on 6 1 of 2014. And there's been all this Donald Trump coding connected to uh, Ronald Reagan and whatnot. And that year, 2014, we got the death of James Brady. He died on August 4th, Obama's birthday, but his name in Gematria equals 98. They ruled his death a homicide on 8-8, even though he got shot 33 years before. But anyway, you go from Alice's death to his death, a span of 64 days. Remember, 64, whatever it is. I can't even remember it all. There's so much, so much going on with it. What, whatever I said. 98 equals 64. You know, Michigan equals 64. So, anyway, maybe I'll make a video on that to make more sense to this. Otherwise, the video is going to be even longer than I, you know, it's going to be super long if I include that. So, we get the death of Alan Thicke then, age 69. His real name is Alan Willis Thicke, or that's like what his full legal name is now. That in Gematria equals 69. He dies at the age of 69. I also noticed in regards to growing pains, growing pains in Gematria equals 912 in English Gematria. And he died 9 months, 12 days after his 69th birthday. Andrew Luck's birthday is also 9 slash 12, September 12th. And I'll get into that as we keep moving along here. So he plays, on Growing Pains, he played the character Jason Seaver that equals 39. His name, Alan Thicke, equaled 39. 
Just interesting in regards to the big way of them two names, Alan Thick equals 84 the big way, Jason Seaver equals 129 the big way, both numbers connected to America and whatnot. America equals 129 in Jewish, United States of America equals 84 in Jewish. There's also something that I'm missing, and I need to go back and rewatch this movie Left Behind, the one with Kirk Cameron in it, the apocalyptic type movie, and there's just, there's been lots of coding in regards to Donald Trump and the wall, and I talked about, somewhere in the mix I talked about Ezra, Ezra Pound and Ezra, the guy who built the wall around Jerusalem. I know in the movie Left Behind it begins with Kirk Cameron's character, he's in Israel, and then it starts to get bombed and whatnot. Just lots of end of the world type stuff. Need to go back and watch it. But pointing it out in the article, that's the reason I'm pointing it out. On the CNN article, they tell us that Thick recently appeared on Netflix's Fuller House. And then they mention Kirk Cameron because Candace Cameron is like the star of it. It's DJ from Full House. And a really long time ago, I covered Full House. When this show was like first being talked about being made, I was talking about the number 88. Remember, Trump equals 88 in Gematria. But the episode of the, the actual TV show Full House, the 88th episode, just so happens to be called Fuller House. And then they come out with this new whatever, the new show called Fuller House. So interesting in regards to 88. Also, I guess Kirk Cameron right now is 46 years old and his sister was born on 4-6. Don't know how that really fits in, but just throwing that in there. Anyway, the reason I know that it's connected to the Super Bowl is because I went to Wikipedia and I was going to look at the 88th episode of Growing Pains, and then I was also going to see all of the other episodes and see a few certain numbers that have been really standing out Seems like a lot of these deaths really do sing up to the Super Bowl and whatnot. And I thought I'd look up the 51st episode. On Wikipedia, there is no 51st episode. It skips over 50 to 52. And I thought, no way. You know, that that's completely, they're telling us that it is coded to the Super Bowl. So I found that episode and I actually watched it. But anyway, Wikipedia and Gematria even equals 51 and it's missing the 51st episode. I've talked about how Wikipedia is super synced up, like it has to be Freemasons and whatever controlling it. I have, just type it in on my little uh, video search, type in Wikipedia, you'll find examples of what I'm talking about. Even when you go in and change stuff, they have people in there sitting on there on the weirdest stuff of all time and they change it back within a few hours and it doesn't make any sense. Even if you cite a source, they change it back. It's almost as if they write a script for certain people and then they use Wikipedia, the numbers and stuff on Wikipedia. That's why they write the stupidest stuff like, oh, I don't even know. They'll write something about somebody mowed, mowed lawns as a kid and they, they made, you know, $1,300. And you're like, why do, what does that even matter to anything about them? But they do that stuff all the time on Wikipedia. Anyway, I'm sorry. So it's missing episode 51. Growing pains equals 912. This guy dies nine months, 12 days after his birthday. Andrew Luck was born on 912. So I went to Put Locker to find this episode, and you actually find the episode. It's called A Star is Born. A Star is Born in Gematria equals 136. Dallas in Jewish Gematria equals 136. And think about a star, a star, Dallas, the logo, the star. So I think, and I've been talking about how I think it's foreshadowing a lot to the 1971 Super Bowl, Super Bowl V, where the Colts defeated the Cowboys. I even saw on Facebook today, somebody posted something in regards to, uh, Tony Romo, they think Tony Romo is a better player and Tony Romo coming back and people are arguing about it. And in one of the previous videos I showed that in 1971, 
the same type of thing happened in regards to quarterbacks with the Dallas Cowboys. And both of them quarterbacks were born on 2-5. Craig Morton and Roger Staubach, both born on February 5th. This, this year's Super Bowl 51 is on February 5th. Tony Romo, even born on the 112th day of the year. The Super Bowl's in Houston. Houston equals 112. You know, possibly nothing, but that's instantly what I think. A star is born. I thought some of the other interesting, the episodes around it were pretty interesting. Taking care of business. I talked about with the World Series and whatnot. Remember the movie Taking Care of Business was all about the Cubs winning the World Series in Game 7. And, and it was also the entrance song for Donald Trump on his roast on Comedy Central. The one that had the Grover Cleveland $1,000 bill in the background. They showed us the 88 on it. I mean, just ridiculous, but we also had Big Brothers not watching. I mean, just hilarious, because that is exactly the world that we live in. Big Brother, the 1984 George Orwell book. You know, maybe it's not quite as bad, but it, it pretty much seems like it anymore. Everything coded by the numbers, just crazy stuff going on. The best one that I thought, the one that I thought was the best was uh, the 49th episode called Michael Gate. And remember, the Patriots won Super Bowl 49, the year of Deflate Gate and whatnot. And this one's called Michael Gate, which actually makes a lot of sense because later on, I'll just scroll down to it really quick. So, on this episode of Fuller House that this guy's on, that came out on December 9th, which could be written as 12 slash 9, like his character Jason Seaver, or also 9 slash 12. And he died. Nine months, 12 days after his birthday, growing pains equals 912. Anyway, he he's like the old grandpa who's kind of like got set up on a date with DJ. But he, every time he talks, he always says, Mike here. So his name's Mike. And then we got Michael Gate. You know, possibly nothing, but very interesting in regards to it's the 49th episode and the Patriots... Went on to win Super Bowl 49 after Deflategate. Once again, reminding us of the Indianapolis Colts, though. So anyway, I watched the episode of Growing Pains, the 51st episode, and I noticed that the school is called Thomas E. Dewey High School. And how interesting is this? I've talked about in the World Series, i talked about all of the the number 48, a lot of stuff went back to 1948. We even had the extra supermoon this year on Prince Charles's birthday, November 14th. It was the closest supermoon since the year 48. Israel declared its independence in the year 48. Talked about uh, that was the last time that the Cleveland Indians had won the World Series. The Michigan Wolverines won the championship that year as well. Trump Donald Trump and Gematria equals 48. Lots of foreshadowing to 48. I also, after the election, I mentioned that they were showing us that 1948, the 1948 election was the biggest election upset in American history when this guy lost to Harry S. Truman. Thomas E. Dewey lost to Harry S. Truman, the only president to die at the age of 88. Think about Donald Trump. Trump equals 88. He wins. They're both underdogs. Underdog equals 88 in Gematria. Thomas Dewey equals the same as Donald Trump. 48 and 138. He gets upset in the 1948 election. So, I mean, what are the odds? What really are the odds of this growing pains taking place at Thomas E. Dewey High School Something that was super foreshadowed this year with Donald Trump upsetting Hillary Clinton and whatnot. Also, think about all the 1971 stuff I've talked about then in regards to Super Bowl V and the Nebraska Courthuskers and whatnot. Thomas E. Dewey, he just so happened to die in Miami, Florida in 1971. That's where the college football championship was held in the Orange Bowl. That's where Super Bowl V was held. In the Orange Bowl, he died 58 days after Super Bowl V. 
Harry Truman equals 58. He was bored on 58. Freemasonry equals Freemasonry equals 58. Truman, the 33rd president, the highest degree. He also died in Kansas City, so who knows? Wouldn't it be kind of funny if somehow the Chiefs made the Super Bowl because of Harry S. Truman? Reminds me a lot of Bart Starr, who was the MVP of the Packers and in Super Bowl One, and when they beat the Chiefs. I still think it's more connected to things in regards to the Chiefs, and it's more connected to this guy than it is to Harry S. Truman. So, you know, but just something to think about, I guess. In regards to the Colts, remember when the Colts uh, came back and they, the Chiefs were winning by 28 and the Colts came back and beat them in 2014. They won 45 to 44. So just something to think about. I also noticed that Thomas Dewey was an alum alumni of the University of Michigan who won the championship in the year 48, you know, the same year that he lost the election. He was also, he also died on the 75th day of the year. Indianapolis Colts equals 75, Minnesota Vikings equals 75. But he was also the 47th governor of New York. And Super Bowl 51 will be the 47th modern era Super Bowl, possibly showing us the Giants because of that, the 47th governor of New York. Another reason I know he's connected to football was because he was born on the 83rd day of the year of 1902. And football equals 83. Talked about it before. Tom Brady born on 8-3. Peyton Manning born on the 83rd day of the year. Tons of other examples with 83 in football. So, in this episode of Growing Pains, Season 3, Episode 7, which I didn't write it in this post, but interesting because the year that the Patriots won the Super Bowl, I talked about the episode of the Brady Bunch. It was Episode 37. It was called Confessions, Confessions, and Peter Broke the vase in the house and then he wouldn't tell the truth about it because he was playing ball in the house and then he wouldn't tell the truth reminding us of deflate gate and tom brady and whatnot but the statue that he the, that he breaks the statue right next to it is literally a horse statue reminding us of the colts so just something to point out season three episode seven the 37 tom brady was 37 years old at the time i can't even remember it all but in this episode, which is also the 51st episode, Mike Seaver finally finds something he's good at, whatever, and he's in the school play called Our Town. And you can even see Dewey High School there. It's really hard to see, but... Our Town is written by this guy, Thornton Wilder. And I just put this in here just to put it in here, but, you know... He died age 78, and his name, Thornton Wilder, equals 78. Just another example of a celebrity whose name, Gematria, syncs up either to the age or the amount of days after their birthday to their death. Yeah. And he died in the year 75. Once again, the 75 that I just mentioned in regards to the Colts, the Vikings. This year was even the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, and this guy died on 12-7 Pearl Harbor Day in the year 75, which is also a big number I talked about in regards to Native Americans. So possibly showing us the Chiefs. I think it would be really hilarious in the Super Bowl if the Cowboys went and lost because then we would have the Indians lose the World Series and then the Cowboys lose the Super Bowl, the Cowboys and the Indians. Anyway, the teacher that is in control of the school play it just so happens to be the coach. And they don't tell you what sport he coaches, but I assume that it's at least football. Possibly he coaches the basketball team as well. But before they go out and do the play, he draws up a play on the board and he's talking about button hooking and a bunch of football terms. So just interesting, the football coach is the coach of the school play on the 51st episode that Wikipedia didn't put on there. His name is Coach Lubbock, which reminds me of Texas. Lubbock, Texas. 
On Wikipedia, it even says that it's the 83rd most populous city in the United States. Football equals 83. It reminds me a lot of the Lubbock Lights, the one of the most the first famous UFO cases in the United States. Lubbock Lights equals 51, like Super Bowl 51, and this the Lubbock Lights also happened in the year 51. So go figure. Regardless if it's connected to the Super Bowl, Lubbock Lights equal 51 happens in the year 51. Excuse me. And the whole thing of this episode was Mike didn't remember his lines because he didn't try hard enough. And then he comes out later and he's really good. And because he's just naturally good at acting or whatever. But and he's all, everyone is all worried about him. And then all these other people in the episode on the play mess up, especially like the narrator of the play. But what's funny is some of the stuff that he talks about in this. So... He says, a streak of light in the morning star. And then think about what the episode is called. A star is born. Think about all of the apocalyptic stuff in regards to Kirk Cameron. Jesus in the Bible is the bright morning star. Lucifer means morning star. Remember Jesus equals 74. Lucifer equals 74. Cross, Muhammad, Gospel, Joshua, Yeshua. Messiah, all equals 74. Anyway, if you look up the word luck, like Andrew Luck, you also find out that lots of people believe that the word luck is connected to Lucifer. Whether it is or not, I never found a, a straight example, but there's lots of people who believe that the word luck is associated to Lucifer. So just interesting in regards to luck. Lucifer, luck equals 233 in Jewish Gematria, 233, the 51st prime. This episode also ends when Mike looks up to the sky and sees a falling star or a shooting star. What's interesting, I always talk about how these weird things happen to me, and yesterday, or whatever day it was, the day that this happened and then I came home from work, there was a pizza order, and my boss wrote Cameron on the ticket for the name. And I was like, who? I live in a town of 1,000 people, and I know pretty much people, almost everybody from the towns around, too. So I was like, who in the world is Cameron ordering a pizza? I have no idea. I don't know anybody named Cameron. I don't know anybody's last name. And it turns out the person that came in, their name was Cameron. And, you know, I gave her crap about being a terrible speller. Because she wrote Cameron, and the name was Cameron. So just just interesting. I come home, the big deal was about Alan Thicke dying, and all I could think about was Kirk Cameron, and how he's connected to a whole bunch of stuff, and he's super connected to this. It makes you think of Cam Newton as well, but obviously the Panthers aren't going to the Super Bowl. Cameron and Jabatria equals 33 the small way. 69 the big way, Alan Thick equals 69, dies age 69. Cameron, the way that she wrote it on the ticket, equals 26 and 62. Reminding us of God, God equals 26, 26 letters in the alphabet. 26 and 62, Queen also equals 26 and 62. Just reminds me of the royal family yet again. It's super synced up to Donald Trump. And in regards to that, think about David Cameron, the Prime Minister who resigned. We had Brexit. Brexit happened 138 days before the U.S. election. Donald Trump and Gematria equals 138. I also looked up Robin Thicke. I don't really know that much about this guy because I don't ever listen to his music, but he was born on the... 69th day of the year, remember his dad equals 69, died age 69. In regards to that, Colts in Gematria also equals 69. Also thinking about growing pains, it reminds me a lot of Leonardo DiCaprio. That's pretty much where he, you know, got his first start 
I don't know if it's the exact first start, exact first TV show, but that's the first thing that I remember him from is Growing Pains. And he got super famous after the movie Titanic, the James Cameron movie, The Revenant. And it came out in the United States in Christmas last year, in 2015, which is just kind of funny because it says right here, I've never even watched this movie. I remember talking about it before the Super Bowl because it's about the big bear attack scene and the Super Bowl was super connected to the 85 bears and a bunch of other stuff. But it says it's based on the novel of the same name describing frontiersman Hugh Glass's experiences in 1823. And then it came out on Christmas Day of 2015. And I just made the video about the Black Santa and the story of the reindeer becoming famous in the year 1823 by the night before Christmas. So, just kind of interesting, the year 1823, I've noticed just recently. Also think about it, a star is born. Most people think that Jesus' birthday is on Christmas. The Revenant and Gematria equals 51. Alan Thick in Jewish Gematria also equals 197. That number super reminds me of Prince. Prince equals 197 in Gematria. Talked about how a lot of stuff still synced up to the death of Prince the singer who died on Queen Elizabeth's 90th birthday. The 45th prime number is 197. Trump, the 45th president. A lot of the stuff I've talked about goes back to Valentine's Day and Lupercalia. Valentine's, the 45th day of the year. Mike Pence equals 45 in Gematria. They also told us that he died playing hockey on Yahoo.com. And interesting, that this picture here, he's wearing the Mighty Ducks thing. The other guys are wearing the Los Angeles Kings. I mean, Los Angeles and Gematria, Los Angeles, California, 197. Hockey equals 31. Thick born on 3-1. So I thought maybe possibly they're just showing us the Dallas Stars, the hockey team. He was a, a huge fan of hockey and whatnot. I read even that he was like good friends with Wayne Gretzky and whatnot. I swear in the movie, the movie The Mighty Ducks 2, I swear there's a part where they meet the Dallas Stars. I didn't go back and watch it. I need to find it, but I just didn't have enough time. But I swear there's a part about him, the team getting to go meet the Dallas Stars, who used to be the Minnesota Stars. And that movie takes place in Minnesota. Gordon Bomb Bay reminds us of the bombing of Bay. Reminds me of like the Bay Area, San Francisco which brings you back to Full House that takes place in San Francisco. Who knows? I, I didn't go back and rewatch that movie, but I know there's a whole bunch of significant stuff. All the, there's tons of Charlie Sheen stuff going on too, or there, you know, within the past year and Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen are what half brothers and whatnot. Even in that movie, Goldberg says that he's moving back to Philly. Then he never moves back to Philly. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Goldberg, the goalie. But anyway, what I did watch was this episode of Fuller House, the one that he was supposedly on, or that he was on. It was called Mom Interference. It was, I believe, the second episode of the second season on Netflix. But it was, there was so much foreshadowing in this episode. Unbelievable. So... Just before they show us this kid wearing the blue football jersey with the number 39 on it, you know, possibly nothing, the blue jersey, it looks more like a Rams uniform than it does a Colts uniform, but the blue uniform, the number 39, 39 reminds us a lot of New York, everything in New York connected to the number 39 even became a state on a date numerology of 39 new york equals 39 empire equals 39 lots of 39 in regards to new york so possibly showing us the giants but also cowboys and gematria equals 39 
But this whole episode completely foreshadowing the football season. And just before they show this kid, they show this this guy right here. I've never watched the show ever. It's the only episode I ever watched. Fernando. Anyway, just before this kid comes on in the football uniform, this guy's making bacon. And the other little kid comes in and says that he's going to quit eating meat. He's going to be a vegetarian. And this guy says, good luck. No one can resist my bacon. And just think about bacon in regards to football. Pigs and the pig skin. They even tell the little kid that bacon comes from pigs. And then, you know, he he's given up bacon. What? He's given up meat, bacon. And then just after that, he turns around and he says, oh, look, a penny. Penny equals 29 like football. And it's all about good luck. Andrew Luck. And then they show this guy wearing the blue football jersey with the number 39 on it. And also, like I said, this episode, the whole season came out December 9th, 2016. 12 slash 9 or 9 slash 12, Andrew Luck's birthday. September 12th, Rowing Pains equals 912. They even, look at the little pictures here. They even got the one with the, the space picture. There's been all the space symbolism all year this year. Prince dying on the night of a full moon. We just had the death of, um, whatever, John Glenn. And then he was in the hospital at the same time as Buzz Aldrin. And Buzz Aldrin's... I just found this out from one of my comments. Buzz Aldrin's doctor was named Dr. David Bowie. Think about David Bowie in regards to space, space odyssey. But they, they always have to draw Saturn. There's always a Saturn on anything to do with space in the background of movies. Later in the episode then, when this guy comes in, Alan Thicke, one of the first things they say is, she says, I mean... You have three kids, and he has three grandkids. So they threw in the 33 in the episode. And he's a huge dork in this episode. I don't really get the humor in it. He's, I think it would have been funnier if he was just playing an old guy, but he plays like a, a dorky old guy. But anyway, right after that, he says, and if you're wondering, my number is 72, and he's talking about his age. 72 equals 42. Also, 168 Freemason equals 42. Allen equals 168 in English Gematria. 72, also a big number. I've noticed in regards to a lot of things foreshadowing the assassination of Trump. John Hinckley Jr. equals 72. His assassination attempt on Reagan was... Because of the writings of Arthur Brimmer, and Arthur Brimmer tried to assassinate George Wallace in the year 72. Lots of others. William McKinley equals 72, one of the assassinated presidents. I have a video on it. I can't think of it all off the top of my head, but lots of 72 in regards to things that seem to be foreshadowing an assassination attempt, at least, on Donald Trump. I mean, John Hinckley Jr. even just got out of jail this year. Before this guy says anything in the episode, he always says, Mike here. And Mike here in Gematria equals 47 and 74. The big number in Freemasonry. Once again, you know. Masonic equals 74. Jesus, Lucifer, Cross. Mike equals 29 in Gematria, just like the word football. He even later tells... Uh, DJ that her kid needs football in his life to make him tough or whatever. So just interesting. He's Mike equals 29, like football, talking about football. Later on, he puts his armor on DJ and he says the Hindus call this Kismet, which is Kismet is actually means fate. If you look up Kismet, you find out it means fate. And if your kismet is good, then you are lucky. If you had bad luck, your kismet does not favor you. So, interesting, kismet even has ties to luck. Kismet and Gematria equals 41, just like Super Bowl. 
And Alan Thicke even died on a date numerology of 41. Also, fate in gematria. Fate in Jewish gematria equals 112. Andrew Luck equals 112. Horseshoe equals 112. Super Bowls in Houston. Houston equals 112. Fate in English gematria equals 192. Andrew Austin Luck equals 192. Indianapolis Colts equals 192. Obama equals 192. NFL equals 192. So we'll leave it at that. Possibly I'll make a video on the, the Brady Bunch lady. But there's tons of, it seems to me, tons of Indianapolis Colts foreshadowing going on with the death of him. I still, I think it's connected to the Cowboys, but like I said, possibly it is connected to the Giants. And if it's, if it's not connected to either one of these teams, if it's not connected to the Cowboys or to the Colts, I mean, it is connected to them, but if neither one of them teams even make the Super Bowl, there's something that they're doing with these two teams that are showing us what is going to happen in the Super Bowl or who is going to be in the Super Bowl. There's, a, there's always more to learn. That's why I don't like making picks. I like showing things that I find that are interesting because it's every day it changes. Every day they're showing us something different, trying to figure out what exactly they're doing with the stories that they're giving us and what exactly they're coding it to. Sometimes they show you a lot of something that you really think is going to happen and it's actually just something that is based off of what they're showing you. So possibly the 1971 Super Bowl is just connected to something completely different. You know, example like the Kansas City Chiefs being connected to the year 48 and Harry S. Truman and whatnot. An example is they foreshadow a lot in the last two seasons. They foreshadowed a lot to the Philadelphia 76ers and then... You know, it was connected to Golden State and the Cleveland Cavaliers. So just because they're showing you the, the 76ers a whole lot and they're showing everything to Philadelphia and the 76ers, it doesn't mean that the, the 76ers are going to win. They're just showing you something that is connected to these other teams that are in the coding and in the plan. So... I still think that, I don't know, in my head, it really seems that they're really showing us Dallas and the Colts, especially with this episode being called A Star is Born. And then, and then in the episode, they even mention the streak of light and the morning star. And it, you know, Jesus is the bright morning star, Lucifer, the morning star has ties to luck, according to some people, but also... Dallas Cowboys and Gematria equals 151. Jesus Christ equals 151. Valentine's Day equals 151. It just seems fitting. It seems more fitting to me than the Giants. And possibly, though, like I'm saying, possibly I'm missing something. I guess moral of the story that I'm saying is there's so much interrelated things that are going on with the storylines that these people are using that sometimes you can get it wrong even though it seems so obvious that they're showing you certain things that doesn't always sync up to what they're showing you it's something just interrelated to what they have been showing you all year if that makes any sense but gonna leave it at that this guy for sure is death super synced up to the Super Bowl who exactly for, you know, make your own decision. I'm just presenting information. Say what I think. Doesn't mean I'm right. One last thing that I forgot to point out. In regards to these 912s, these 912s. In, if you write out 912 of Jabatria, it equals 203. Also, if you write out 318, it equals 203 which is an interesting number. 318, I talked about a bunch of times how it's connected to Prince Charles, who was born on the 318th day during a non-leap year. His wife, Princess Diana, died on 31-8. It 
It's a number connected to the backwards pi. Anyway, somebody pointed out to me the other day, well, before I even mention that, it's also like in the Zapruder film, JFK was assassinated in the 318th frame. But somebody pointed out to me somewhere in a comment the other day that the second coming of Jesus Christ is also mentioned 318 times in the New Testament. So just interesting in regards to the star stuff that I was talking about and I guess how it connects to 912. But going to leave it at that. Who knows, you know? There's always more to find. I'm sure there's... I've seen some people talking about Robin Thicke, his son, and how it connects to Miley Cyrus and Dolly Parton and the the Oakland Fire and all kinds of stuff. And I just need to do more some more research. I just watched a few of these episodes and whatnot. But I'm rambling. Peace. See you later. Have a good one.